competition has been de-emphasized. Having the greatest competitive fire is not as important as it used to be. Ah, oh, here goes Whitlock, beating up LeBron again. I'm not bringing this up to beat up LeBron. I'm not trying to denigrate LeBron James with this anecdote. I'm just speaking facts about a cultural shift in basketball. Michael Jordan, the best player perhaps of all time in the NBA, took great pride in playing all 82 regular season games. There were like three other times he played 80 or more. Most of his career, including his final season with the Washington Wizards at age uh, 39, Michael Jordan played all 82 games. He was a reflection of that era and how important competition was to his era of basketball players. LeBron James is the uh, greatest player of the post-Jordan era. I'm not trying to denigrate him. But he's also a symbol of where NBA culture and sports culture has gone. Competition has been de-emphasized. Having the greatest competitive fire is not as important as it used to be. And it's easy to say, oh, players have just gone soft, it's all about money, uh, they're just not built like Michael Jordan and the guys from that era, the whole thing's gone soft and LeBron's a wimp. That's not what I'm arguing. I'm arguing that there has been a cultural shift and something has been done to the culture to shift it so that the sports world is less competitive and more soft. Or is it softer? I don't know if it's more, soft. it's probably softer. The sports world is softer. And I say, and, and what this conversation is about today, is that Disney is the reason sports culture has gone soft. In 1996, Disney acquired ABC and ESPN. They took over the worldwide leader in sports. Disney did in 1996. Jordan's heyday in the NBA ended, uh, I think, in 1998. So at the tail end of Jordan's dominance of the NBA, his second three-peat uh, with the Chicago Bulls, here comes Disney in to take over the worldwide leader in sports, ESPN. And at the time, no one thought much about it. No one knew the significance of it. But I think here in 2022, it should be becoming quite apparent that when Disney takes over an industry, it's going to significantly change that industry. And Disney's acquisition of ESPN was an acquisition of the sports world. So I, I wanna read you, this is kind of the definition with my little tweak on it again, and, and with no negative intent, I'm not trying to take anything out of control, but this is what my definition of grooming is based off of everything I've read up, how other people have described grooming. Grooming is the act of building a relationship, trust, and emotional connection with a child so that you can shape their sexual, gender, political, and racial worldview. Grooming. Building a relationship with a child so that you can shape their sexual, gender, political, and racial worldview. This is what the parental rights bill in Florida is about. It's trying to stop this grooming process that's going on in our schools. Ron DeSantis is at the forefront, and Florida is at the forefront of this fight. They have passed a parental rights law that Disney, a California-based company, has publicly opposed. Disney and its employees have put Ron DeSantis and Florida and this bill in the crosshairs. They've called it the don't say gay bill. It has nothing to do with saying the word gay. It's about parents being able to control, object to, 
school systems trying to teach kindergartners through third grade, that's four, five, six, and seven year olds, about sexuality and gender. Parents in Florida and most right-minded parents, they want the right to teach their kids about sexuality and gender. They want to groom their children in the way that they see fit, not leave it to crazy school teachers.